Development, Environment, Agriculture and Rural Development, Lebohang Mai Lebo, on Monday next week, engage with economic and social developers, investors, environmental consultants, provincial and local governments about easing the cost of doing business in Gauteng. The meeting echoes a recent undertaking by the Premier of Gauteng, David Makura, in his state of the province address for 2016 to reduce both the regulatory burden and developmental approval processes, especially on environmental impact assessments or EIAs. To discuss further, we are now joined in studio by MEC Lebohang Maile. Thank you very much for joining us, MEC. Thanks for having me. Good evening to you and the viewers at home. Now, MEC, why is this meeting necessary? Well, we have been having what we call EIA open days previously, but since I took over the portfolio of economic development, I was also given the environment and agriculture portfolio. I then decided that we rather have a broader view and look at um, the cost of doing business and the ease of doing business in Gauteng, because it's not just related to, to the EIAs. And of course, we are not just worried about the cost of doing business. There's also the cost of living uh, in Gauteng, which uh, is high and um, it's also related to the cost of doing business. People are complaining about a whole range of issues, uh, it all being one of them, the cost of electricity, um, the process it takes to get, uh, to get for instance, water, um, what is called water utilization licenses, and many uh, under li uh, other licenses. So we thought we should rather get everybody under one roof, national government, ourselves, because there are things that we can do, things that municipalities can do, and there are things that national government can do. But we can't be giving people a run around if we want to, if we are serious about investment, we are serious about um, uh, growing the economy. We can't be telling people it's not me, it's the municipality, it's not me, it's national and all that. So we are trying to also coordinate ourselves and government, get our acts together and make sure that when people come to us for help, whether they go to the municipality or national or province, they must get help. Because one of the problems is that it's uh, sometimes difficult for business to get help from government because we have different doors and that's why we want to also have one door and we've got what we call the Gauteng uh, Investment Center which is in Santin. It's doing precisely that. It's, it's having a national government, a home affairs for instance, investors who want visas they can go there, so who want to apply EIAs, uh, you want to do a rezoning in the municipality, everything can be done there uh, so that we are able to streamline our processes and make uh, um, the job of investors easy because what's the point of saying people must come and invest but we make it difficult for them, doesn't make sense and that's one of the things we are having, I mean, one of the reasons why we are having this meeting. And I want to look at the point that you made about <coughs> coordinating. Now, you mentioned ETOLs as one of the cost of doing business, electricity as another. Now, we've had an ongoing battle with the ETOLs, for example, a battle that continues, um, not just for even business owners, but for yeah. ordinary um, Gauteng citizens as well. So how are you going to tackle instances like that where governments pass passes a law and says, well, this is law and, you know, this is what the people need to pay for versus what you believe um, is hindering businesses from actually um, wanting to do business within the province, because that's really important. I think this government has proven in the last few years that uh, we are not uh, fanatics of our own ideas. And if we pass a law and it doesn't work, there's nothing that prevents us from reviewing it. the recent visa laws. We just uh, but let's look at ETOs. I want us to look at ETOs because that's that's yeah. the burning issue, especially in Gauteng. No, look, even on ETOs. By the way, remember, Gauteng has got a position, and at some point we're saying we want this to be completely scrapped. Um, we instituted, we put in place a panel of the premier to review it came with these recommendations we engaged with national government and we will continue to engage and i think um, uh, our position is well known well documented the premier raised the issue for the first time in 2014 in the state of the province address and uh, subsequently we acted we have put in place a panel the panel made its recommendations public 
and we presented the recommendations to the national government. And it's not just that issue only. The, like I'm saying, there are many other laws which uh, might be making things difficult for business. And we will constantly look at those issues. And that's why, for instance, if you look at the bylaws now in different municipalities, uh, some of the bylaws makes it difficult for even the informal traders, not just big business. We're not just concerned about business. We big business only. We're also concerned about the informal traders, the small businesses, and the big business as well. So we will always listen, we'll always act, and hence we are having a meeting with them to report as well on what have we done on some of the issues they have raised. For instance, on the EIAs, it used to take 18 months to get an approval in Gauteng. It now takes three months, and we want to reduce that further. Mm -hmm. uh, the payment of uh, suppliers who are doing business with government used to be a big problem. Yes, it's still a problem, but uh, we have made significant strides. And that is why uh, departments like the ones that I'm leading, agriculture and environment, are paying people in 14 days. And we have now made it a, a commitment. Premier has said all Gauteng government departments must pay people in 14 days. So we want to report to them on all these things um, that uh, we're making. P people used to co uh, complain about corruption, to say only the politically connected get tenders. We have said 60% of our tenders, um, we started last year, this year we're increasing it to 60%, will be done through an open tender system. So what it means is that when you tender, on the day of the tender, when it closes, you can go and check who has applied, and how much they've uh, uh, quoted, and we will then be told on this or that day, uh, we will be adjudicating this tender, and you can come. Everything is going to be um, uh, transparent. You know. So there's quite a lot of things we are doing in response to the issues that business has raised with us. Uh, so we, we think annually and constantly we should have a, a, a discussion where we say you have raised this issue, we agree with it or we don't agree with it. And if we don't agree, uh, let's agree to disagree. This is our position. If we agree with you, this is what we're going to do. We'll put these steps in place. And that's what we're doing now. And hence, I'm demonstrating with these two issues how we've been able, including with ETOS, by the way, businesses raised the issue with us. They came to... And there was a review uh, on There it. was a review. We've yeah. reviewed it. It's no longer in its And I want to come form. in there and, and say, I, I know as MEC of Economic Development specifically, you're very passionate about SMMEs and the township economy as well. Now, the struggle of a small enterprise and a medium enterprise, as well as a township business, is completely different. Mm -hmm. They don't have the same struggles, they don't have um, the same opportunities, for example, as well. So how are you going to go about coordinating or balancing out, um, into, uh, balancing out the support that you give to each of the sectors? That is why we have tailor-made uh, programs for township entrepreneurs. We've got a strategy for your SMMEs, we've got uh, a strategy as well. Um, some of the big black business um, and, 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 and big business. So we can treat business as a homogeneous uh, entity. They've got different, uh, um, they're engaged in different activities. They've got different um, challenges uh, depending on their trades and all that. So we continue to engage the different sectors. And that is why on the, on the, well, forgot the date, but soon we'll be having an economic indaba now with all of them because we will be presenting an economic plan for how thing to say uh, with the uh, current economic situation globally, uh, this is how we believe that how thing must uh, help South Africa to get out of the situation we find ourselves in. You know we are the biggest economy in the yeah. country and if we don't do something uh, big, bold, and we might not be able to get out of the situation that we're in. So we believe we've got the responsibility, working with national government, working with our sister provinces, to ensure that uh, we play our part as Gauteng. We're not saying um, we are, um, uh, all the answers um, uh, lies with Gauteng economy. No, that's not what we're saying. Other uh, provinces are very important, and that is why We'll also be consulting with the national government as well. We need their help 
as much as they need our help because if our economy uh, grows in isolation from other uh, provinces, we'll continue having the problems of uh, people coming into housing and then we must uh, have more money for health, more money for education and all that. So it is in our best interest as housing to see the whole of South Africa uh, developing equally and decentralizing economic benefits. So we, we were looking at that in our, in our plan, but something that we we'll talk about. Let's look at public and private partnerships. How open is big business in terms of working with you in these consultation processes to ensure that you know eco economic development in the province is really one that is holistic but also transformed and inclusive? You know, big business has come to the party big time and and i think we are very um we are very impressed with the responses we have received from them for instance if you take our partnership with the four major banks uh, we have agreed with them that uh, they need to look at um, funding issues differently uh, and as a result, one of the banks, uh, FNB, for instance, has committed about 250 million uh, fund ring fenced for township uh, entrepreneurs. And we will be working with them to ensure that we get more of those uh, township entrepreneurs through our Houghton Enterprise Propeller Agency, which is responsible for SMME support. So it's just but one of the many a concrete um, uh, commitments we've received from the private sector. Um, we can go on and on, for instance, Heineken. There's a program of, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we're looking at the possibility of establishing a malting plant in the, in the Midval. And that has seen and, um, and, um, uh, about 32 farmers being given opportunities um, to farm Bali and all that. So there's quite a, a, a few of them. Pick and pay. It's, so I can go on and on and we are very happy about the response of the private sector. All we want to do now is to ensure that all these initiatives will help us to achieve inclusivity, will help us to facilitate the integration of the small guys into the mainstream economy because it doesn't help to have... Uh, a relationship that's not benefiting the overwhelming majority, that's not migrating them into the mainstream. And those are some of the issues we are working on and we have uh, carefully considered in all the relationships that we have uh, developed. Now, MEC, just staying with the banks, I think something that I just actually thought of now is having bankable business plans because that's always an issue, especially for small and medium mm -hmm. enterprises or, or, or guys that just have business business ideas and business plans on paper. I know that's the most difficult thing for them. When they go to a bank, they are told that their ideas are not bankable, right? Where are the guys in the middle? Are you the ones that are going to facilitate finding those guys in the middle? So either the IDCs or actually the private sector saying that, okay, we're coming to the party and we will make sure that these ideas become bankable and it's easier then for these guys to be uh, to get investment. We've thought about that and that is why we've decided that we must reposition our own funding agency with this Houghton Enterprise Propeller. It must not do what the IDC does, what the NEF does. Because it does. defies the whole purpose. Exactly, it defies the whole purpose. And that's why we want now to refocus their mandate, to focus on training, to focus on incubation, to, pro to focus on project preparation. That includes funding feasibility studies, funding business plans, so that uh, when you have a big idea and you don't have money to do a feasibility a business plan, it becomes their responsibility. And once you are ready and prepared, we then hand you over. The project that we have with FNB, we said about 100 of township-based entrepreneurs will go through the enterprise propeller process. We'll look at their business plans. We'll help them to reach the bankability stage. Then we'll then hand them over. It's the same. A, a role we want Houghton Enterprise Propeller to play with our IDCs, NEFs, and all that. Because a lot of people have big ideas. Um, but they're told they're not bankable. They're told they're not bankable. Having said that, it doesn't mean we will resolve the issue of funding. It's a big issue. We must think outside the box. And that's why we're still pursuing the idea of a township stock exchange.
in Gauteng, we're looking at that because we're looking at various ways of raising funding. We're looking at the uh, cooperative banks. The, we've got about 10 cooperative banks in Gauteng who have asset base of about 100 million rents. We want to look at things like those and we want to look at how can we integrate, for instance, some of uh, these burial societies, stock fairs, because there's about, what, 50 billion plus that yeah. is sitting in the banks which could be rechanneled through these cooperative banks, through the stock exchange, and many others. So the issue of funding will need a proper a discussion, continuous, must have an integrated approach, must be comprehensive, and we must never think that it will ever be uh, resolved uh, easily and quickly. And that is why government needs to work with the private sector, because if we think we're going to resolve it ourselves, we will be... Um, fooling ourselves, yeah. Now, just finally, the World Economic Forum uh, is having its meeting in Rwanda right now, and we've actually just read a story saying that Africa is the place to invest in. Would you say the same for Gauteng? You know, Gauteng is open for investment. It's still the best place to invest in in the country, maybe even the continent? Yes, definitely. Despite us being number three, No, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, definitely. Um, we, are, we are open for business, and uh, we still remain a gateway to Africa. I know that countries like uh, Kenya have been working very hard to displace us. Um, Not even displacing us. Kenya is big on innovation, and that's something we're still, you know, lacking a little bit behind on. Well... Look, we have uh, uh, a lot of initiatives on innovation, and I don't want to say we are not doing anything. I think one of the weaknesses is that there is no coordination. Because if you look at just how things are known, Johannesburg City yeah. has about 250 million innovation fund. Um, You've got uh, Twani that has got its own innovation. The innovation You've hub. You've got the city yeah. of Cape Town. So I think one of the things we need to do as a country is to coordinate yeah. our efforts properly. And uh, I think we're on the right uh, path. We just need to consolidate, uh, coordinate ourselves, and not compete amongst ourselves. Yeah. That's why it's how then we don't see ourselves as competitors of other provinces. You know, we need to complement each other so that we can compete better externally with other countries. And no, that, that way that, we'll that's a brilliant point, saying that yeah. we need to coordinate all our structures yeah. because we have it. You know, we've got the funds there. We've, we, we definitely have the skill we've set. We've yeah, we got so much we work lot, that is happening. But it just needs to come together. And the role of the media as well in exposing yeah, those well, yeah. innovative ideas, you know, so that you don't just uh, critique and say uh, Nairobi, I mean, na 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 what is it? Um, Kenya, Kenya has got better. It's not even saying that Kenya is yeah. better. It's saying that this is what they've done. Let's look at what we have and see how we can use it to make sure that we get to maybe the same level or even better. No, I, I, think that's I agree. Really there are areas where they're doing well, and yeah. there are areas that we're doing well. Yeah. They have had a speed train after how train, yeah. for instance. So it's not a competition. Exactly. They are just yeah. a good example of how okay. innovation can really take a country's no, economy to the I next take level. I take your point, uh, yeah. because I don't think we must... Uh, we've got a bigger responsibility as South Africa. Yeah. We've got a bigger responsibility as Gauteng. And we shouldn't um, um, limit um, ourselves. Definitely. We must always... Uh, the sky should always be the limit, and we should always think outside the box. And if I had time, I would tell you about my visit to Germany recently on innovation, what they do, how much they invest on research and development. You know, and yeah. I realize that we are still far. Yeah. Uh, on industrialization, we are still far. There's so much that yeah. we need to do, and that is why I want to do big things. Yeah, and not well, just small. Things. We clearly need an extra three hours to discuss innovation, exactly. but I'll invite Thank you, you again. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much for joining us, MEC. That was Lebohang Mayile, and he's the Gauteng MEC for Economic Development, Environment, Agriculture, and Rural Development. We'll have more news for you after.